Before this event, you go in all the banks. <coughs> there is a very highly likelihood they use the same interest rate curve to discount cash flow, complete the present value of financial instruments. After this event, banks are even struggling to build a curve to discount cash flows, which have a huge impact on you and me being in a position to do any kind of privilege or any kind of transactions with bank. Because capital becomes a problem, the cost of running your business becomes a problem, because simply people are struggling to know which discount code we should be using to discount cash flows. The other things that was very, very challenging after this event is the concept of counterparty risk. Before this event, people, when banks trade between them, they just take something that they call the swap curve, the rival curve, to discount cash flows. But during the crisis, we have seen that the major losses that, that banks did heavily suffer was not actually coming from default losses. They was coming from what people call market-to-market -market losses. What does it mean? Let us assume that, let's say, I, I, I lend you money today, you are triple-A rated, and I decide that this loan for those accountants is classified as a fair value loan. If tomorrow your credit rating changes, which means that your credit worthiness improved or worsened, it has a huge impact on how do I value that loan today. And now, as you, as you may see, during the credit crisis, the credit quality of certain banks did deteriorate, which had a huge impact on their cost of borrowing. And because th th they were using those curves basically to discount those cash flows, they were struggling. Oh. And now what happened, post the credit crisis, people are trying to now be smarter. When they value privilege between themselves, they try to include what they call counterparty risk, and now trying to compete the fair value of that counterparty risk this is what people in our jargon that people call credit valuation adjustments. What does it mean? If I assume that the counterparty does not default, what is the value of the transaction? If I assume the counterparty does default, what is the value of the transaction? And that difference needs to be reserved somehow. Before bank was not doing that. Mm. The second problem that the that, that, that okay after the credit crisis is the concept of wise discovery. Because now the trust between banks are not where they used to be. When banks trade between them, they ask for collateral. But I can do a random trade and receive a collateral in dollar. Now the question is, which discount curve, which interest rate curve I should use to present value those cash flows? You go to Standard Bank, you go to Africa, you go to FNB, you may have different responses. What happened post the credit crisis has almost revolutionized the way banks value their financial instruments. Maybe, but if you could maybe comment from a, from a dealer side of things, how you how you how how you how you give those challenges? <coughs> I think one can't be more. From an audit firm perspective, it is hugely difficult. First of all, the, the counterparty, for example, gets confirmed the value from the bank. The bank would take the counterparty's credit risk into account as, as well as the whole netting set of yes. instruments. And from, from the corporate's point of view, the corporate wants to book that trade. The corporate doesn't know if the bank took his own credit risk into account yes. or the corporate took in the its own or the, or the bank took the bank's credit risk into account. So it becomes very difficult when you arrive at a audit, the client proposes a value, and you really don't know what assumptions was made behind this. My name is Lodge from APSA Capital. I work with the doctor. Quick question uh, from the panel. What's your experience on the debit valuation adjustment? What is currently South African consensus on that? Um, I think there's not a consensus. I think we know that between um. the banks. Um, my personal view, and the view of some people around me in the organization as well, is that it's, uh, it's theoretically correct to do it. It 
exactly the same as you're doing your credit value adjustment. So we are um, looking at doing it consistently in the mathematics. We, we have those prices. But the extent to which we will pass that benefit on to customers isn't so clear because we don't know what the implications are going to be for our aging, how we're going to control that risk, all that type of thing. So it's there with the price. Yeah. We're unable to extract the value from it. Um, and I don't know that's sort of can't really convince regulators to do anything differently. I'm not sure that it really is um, right that you can't extract the value. 